You're listening to The Hour of the Time. I'm William Cooper. And I'm Carolyn Nelson. And uh, right off the bat, folks, we've spoken to our supplier. And we are back in the food storage business. And this time, I hope you take advantage of it. Only, unfortunately, if you don't hurry, you're going to pay a lot more. And that's the truth. Remember, last summer, had all the flooding in the Midwest. Killed a lot of crops had widespread drought across the Midwest and all through the South, and if you've been noticing in the supermarket, food prices are going up steadily. They will continue to go up because there is becoming a shortage of certain supplies of food. Now, I'm not going to do it like we did last time. Last time, we invested a lot of money in flyers and circulars and all this stuff to let you guys know what was in these food storage packages. And uh, I guess altogether we spent close to $1,000. Not one person purchased any of it. We offered the same food that everyone else offers, stored the same way in enameled cans, nitrogen packed, just like everyone else offers, the same quality food, dehydrated, and uh, at a much, much lower price than you can get anywhere in this country. Bar none, ladies and gentlemen. It happens to be a fact. So what we're going to do is once a week we're going to offer something at a special price. If you want it, you got to buy it. Your envelope has to be postmarked within that week. If it's not, we will send your money and your order back to you. It must be postmarked in the week that we offer it. Otherwise, you pay retail price. We're not going to play around with you anymore. Uh, We... Uh, We did it for you. We invested a lot of money for you. Uh, We made it available for you. Nobody took advantage of it. The minute we stopped, everybody wants it back. So now we got it back. We're going to do it this way. We're going to tell you what's in the package, what we're offering, and what the price is. And if you want it, you must send your money and must be postmarked within that week that we offer it. If it's not, you pay the retail price after that until we offer it again if we do. And as long as people take advantage of what we offer, we will continue to offer. The minute that people stop taking advantage of these special bargains on these uh, food storage packages, then we will stop offering it. Um, We're serious about this, folks. And all of you can sit on your butts out there all you want to. We are not going to eat it in our pocketbook because uh, you're vacillating or you don't understand what's going on or whatever your problem happens to be. It just irks me that we spent that much money. Nobody bought any of this. The minute we stopped offering it, you all want to know why we stopped and you want to purchase these packages. Well, here they are. We're going to offer one item per week at a special price. It'll be cheaper than you can get it anywhere else in the United States of America. And unless you you go out and find suppliers that will sell uh, bits and pieces of this and you package it yourself, you're not going to find a cheaper price, folks. So tonight and through next Thursday, tonight through next Thursday, if your order is postmarked either today, tomorrow, or any day between now and next Thursday, and that includes next Thursday, folks, you can have this, what we're going to offer tonight, and it's what people need the most, so we're going to start out with this, give you an opportunity to pick it up real quick. We're going to offer one year food supply for a full family of four people. One year food supply for a full family of four people. Now that means that this will adequately furnish two people with two years food supply. There are 37 cases. The shipping weight is 1,078 pounds. 
the retail price is two thousand seven hundred and sixty eight dollars that's the retail price we will give it to all the listeners of this program starting tonight and through next Thursday for two thousand two hundred sixty eight dollars that's five hundred dollars off for Kaji members two thousand dollars that's seven hundred and sixty eight dollars off now if you can beat that deal go buy it if you can't get off your butts quit complaining and order it now you've got until next thirty Thursday to order it now let me tell you what's in the package so you'll know uh, this is called the uh, family unit it's one year supply for four adults or two years for two now if you have children this food will last longer it's 36 cases of number 10 cans plus a sprouting unit which makes a total of 37 cases shipping weight is 1078 pounds the volume is 35.2 cubic feet the amount of water that you need to store to be able to reconstitute this food is 545 gallons or if you can't store it you need to be able to obtain that water when you need it over that period of time. Now remember the 545 gallons of water are used to reconstitute the dehydrated food over a one year supply for four adults or two year for two adults. Now remember these adults if you're feeding children unless they're teenage boys uh, you won't need as much if they're teenage boys then this might not last as long <laughs> and you those of you who have teenage boys you know what I'm talking about and the number 10 cans you'll get two of fruit mix two of applesauce two of apple slices two of raisins two of banana slices two of potato granules two of corn two of carrot dices two of tomato powder two of onions chopped two of peas green garden two uh, cabbage, two of bacon bits, uh, six of beef, four of chicken, two of uh, gelatin fruit flavor, two soup base, two peanut butter, two margarine product, two cheese blend, two of salt, 24 of instant nonfat milk, 24 of regular nonfat milk, 12 of uh, pinto beans, 12 macaroni, uh, that's elbow macaroni, 12 uh, with rice, You'll get uh, 24 uh, wheat, hard red wheat. You'll get uh, 24 of whole wheat flour, 24 cracked wheat cereal, uh, 12 of uh, white sugar. You'll get, uh, and two and a half cans, folks. You'll get two with uh, mung beans and Alaska peas, uh, two triticale, uh, two lentils, uh, one complete cookbook for cooking and reconstituting and cooking uh, dehydrated food, one sprouting tray, 80 lids for number 10 cans, and three lids for number two and a half cans. Recommended water storage again is 545 gallons, contains 36 cases of number 10 cans, totaling 216 cans in a sprouting unit, plus uh, um, the number of two and a half number two and a half cans that uh, I read off for you. Now, I'm going to tell you again, you can't get this deal anywhere else in the United States if you can buy it. If you can't, then buy it from us right now, between now and next Thursday. After next Thursday, that unit will not be offered. We'll offer something else. And we'll just go down the list until uh, we've offered uh, whatever suits you. But for those of you who have been looking for a year's supply for a family of four, or two years for two, and remember these are adults, you cannot beat what I have just offered you. Remember, if you're not a Kaji member, regular listener to this program, that's a $500 discount off the retail price. Now, I can't do better for you. So don't give me the sheeple whining crap that I get all the time. If you want it, get it. If you don't, don't call up and whine. Don't uh, tell me that the... Don't, I don't want to hear anything, okay? After our experience when we first offered this stuff and the money that we put out, I don't want to hear anything except if you want it, order it. Otherwise, just uh, shut up, okay? Uh, tonight we're going to get uh, further into the expose of the root of racial tension in this country and elsewhere in the world, how they keep us uh, divided 
and conquered and what it really stems from and most of you who believe in this Aryan master race crap and uh, most of you who uh, call yourselves identity Christians I don't care if you worship in that church I don't care if you believe that the only people I care about are people who are racist who want to kill other people who don't look like them or hurt other people who don't look like them or get rid of them or something those people I will oppose forever uh, I will uh, protect your right to worship at whatever altar uh, you wish to worship at as long as you wish to worship there forever I don't care that's your your business and it's your right in this country we believe in that right that's the only way that it can be otherwise you can have a state that has a state church and uh, we're all gonna have to conform to that that's exactly what the new world order is going to be but you're all gonna find out that you are the victims victims of people who have a hidden agenda and most of your preachers and uh, ministers who are teaching you this crap and feeding it to you are members of these secret societies and they are promoting Zionism Zionism for behind Zionism is not Jewish folks it's not the Jewish people they're being used they're going to be sorry that they're allowing themselves to be used for behind the Zionist movement are the British Israelis the people who believe that they are the master race that they are the lost 13th tribe of Israel that they are the people who are going to inherit the world and the rest of us are going to be their slaves and if you don't believe that you just listen don't go away I'll be right back and ladies and gentlemen if you'll check your history you'll find in the accounts left by the Romans <coughs> as they sent their legions up into Europe to conquer the Celts, the Picts, the Gauls, and the Germanic tribes. They describe very clearly what they found there. And what they found, ladies and gentlemen, was nothing that even remotely could ever be misinterpreted as any remnant of any of the tribes of Israel. It is clear what they found were primitive tribesmen. Some of them were gentle and not warlike and were easily conquered by the Romans. They had no root of Hebrew in their language, period. None of them anywhere. Most of them, however, were fierce tribesmen, many of whom went into battle naked, covered with mud, screaming like banshees and had no mercy for anything. Their women would come along behind them and pick whatever was worth anything off the bodies of the dead and there are accounts that they would even eat parts of the bodies of their slain enemies the germanic tribes were so fierce and so primitive and so pagan that the roman legions were constantly on battle at that frontier and never did completely conquer the germanic tribes the Celts, what were known as the Gauls, what were known as the Picts, most of them were conquered by the Romans. Some of them were incorporated into the Roman Empire and paid taxes to the Romans. All of this is on record. Of course, the Romans brought their religion into those regions and coupled with the pagan religions of those peoples new legends and new myths new metaphors began to evolve and eventually as the Roman Empire became the Catholic Church and the Roman Emperor became the Pope the Catholic religion was introduced and mixed with many of these legends and fables and metaphors and in many of these places strange tales and legends grew up as they struggled to interpret the new religion from the new Bible they began to create legends stories that never happened and were never recorded before that time in their history nor in the history of the Romans in their interaction with them now 
these legends did not become prominent and nobody paid any attention to them and you will not find any record of them until the Normans gained power in England. When the Normans gained power in England, the secret societies began to front for the Norman cause. And a whole legend was created and scriptures were found to back it up that the Anglo-Aryan race was the lost 13 tribe of Israel. None of it stands up under any scrutiny either historically or scripturally. But I hear on the radio and I see and read in pamphlets and books all of the bent and warped scriptures and references and the out and out lies of the history that try to convince people to back this up because this will carry you into the new world order and whether you realize it or not any of you who cling to this and promote it are promoting the new world order you are helping to destroy the United States of America the Constitution and the Bill of Rights and freedom for all of us and you had better get your head on straight and quit listening to those who are misleading you it is a heady wine to think that you are somehow better than others, that you are a master race destined to rule the world, and that when Christ comes, you will be the chosen people, and everyone else will bow to you. It is a lie, ladies and gentlemen, and when you front those ideas, and when you espouse those beliefs, you are in effect, if you are a Christian, calling Jesus Christ a liar and I suggest you go back and read his words for he never made any distinction between classes of people he never rejected anyone nor did he run after anyone who passed his teaching on the road and tried to force his teaching down their throat it never happened never not once he accepted anyone who came to him no matter their race their color or their creed no matter their station in life, whether they were a prostitute or a nobleman, it made no difference to Jesus Christ and his, his formula for acceptance into the kingdom of heaven was simply this. Whomsoever believeth in me shall have everlasting life. He did not say, whomsoever is a British Israelite shall have everlasting life. He did not say, whomsoever is black shall have everlasting life. He did not say, whomsoever is a Jew shall have everlasting life. He did not say, whomsoever is an Anglo-Aryan shall have everlasting life. And you had better understand that those who are manipulating you and teaching you these lies are heading you for a fall. For there is no master race, never was, and never will be. Of course, if you're not a Christian, then this doesn't make much difference to you. But it is a manipulation It comes out of the heart of the mysteries that came from ancient Babylon and were twisted on the continent and in England to promote a hidden agenda. And I quote, ladies and gentlemen, from the book entitled The Teachings of the Masters, written by Reverend Dr. R. Swineburne Clymer, who was the Director General of the Church of Illumination, the Supreme Grand Master of the International Confederation of Initiates of the OTO, of the Golden Dawn, of Freemasonry, of the Knights of Malta and the Knights Templar, the Supreme Grand Master of the merged occult fraternities comprising the Priesthood of Ith, the Rosicrucian Order, the Secret Schools, the Hermetic Brotherhood, Fraternitas Rosicrucius, the Temple of the Rosy Cross, the Order of the Magi, Sons of Isis and Osiris, Illuminati Americani, which translated means the American Illuminati, and this book was published by the Philosophical Publishing Company of Beverly Hall, Quakertown, Pennsylvania, in 1952. The source of this information is from the 68th Convocation of the Rose Cross Order, to which all of the high-ranking members of the various orders and fraternities of what is known by the Brotherhood as the Illuminati, or the Brotherhood of Man, internationally as the Internationale, 
1916 at Beverly Hall. And I quote verbatim, and you had better listen because this is the source of your teachings. And it will be the hard core of the New World religion. It is already pervasive in the New Age movement, and it is very easily checked. I quote, the source of the mystical teachings of the New Testament could offer no other interpretation of the symbolism of the young republic than the ancient pyramid, its copestone and glory, significant of the descent of the New Jerusalem for the one side, and the eagle and the ever-repeating thirteen of Manasseh, thirteenth, or lost, torn away tribe of Israel, and the son of Joseph, the Britons, who was separated from his brethren, in Egypt in the parting asunder of northern Israel from southern Judah. Now historically Judah was never a part of Israel and that's why they say here northern Israel from southern Judah because Judah was never a part of Israel. And if they made it sound as if Judah, a part of Israel, separated itself from the whole then they could be found historically incorrect so they tell the truth. the parting asunder of northern Israel from southern Judah, never again to become part of Judah, and the first to cross Europe in the search of the legendary isles afar off, to re-establish the ancient Gentile throne of Israel at Tava in Ireland. Now it is significant that they separate the name Israel into three syllables, is ra -el, with dashes. It stands for Isis, Ra, who is represented as Osiris, and El. El means God. The hitherto rejected reverse side of our great seal is now in full view of these United States. It is to remind the people that from the beginning they were called to a great work as offspring of a mighty Manasseh whose history began in Genesis and will culminate in America, and by whose stripes the world must be healed and will be healed, despite the many and inglorious betrayals of those who have set themselves up as the leaders of the peculiar people of the eagle. The legend tells us that Joseph, betrayed as we have often been, and cast off by his own people, married the daughter of the priest of the temple of On in Egypt. Now remember, if you've listened to this program, you know that On is another name for the sun, or Osiris, or the light, or Lucifer. They're saying that Joseph, as the legend tells, and it is a legend, it is not historical fact, never was and never can be, for it is a lie. The legend tells us that Joseph, betrayed as we often been, have been, and cast off by his own people, married the daughter of the priest of the Temple of On in Egypt. Today, as an eternal symbol, until the time of the placing of the copestone upon the pyramid, one pillar of that ancient temple stands in London while its mate stands in New York. It is the Phallus of Osiris, the obelisk. There is also one in the outer courtyard of the Vatican, and one stands in Dealey Plaza. One also stands on the estate grounds of the Priory de Sion, or the House of Sion in England. These are vivid and should be constant reminders to us of our unbreakable connections with ancient Egypt and with Europe, and our father Joseph as an Anglo-Saxon culmination. As a result of this union and between these two pillars must all the world, in biblical language, pass into Ephraim or Shiloh. Professor Tutton, an eminent symbologist, understood these ancient mysteries fully and indicated this in his statement, quote, The whole Bible is written in the stars, both the law and the gospel, while esoterically the entire story of man is set forth upon the sea of Manasseh. The obverse side is Israel under the new covenant as the hope and outcome victory of Christianity the two sides reflect each other and cannot be separated unquote and that is the meaning of the new covenant that Clinton espouses for he also is a member this was displayed dramatically in the photograph published worldwide where he stood in the Oval Office holding up a single red rose Castro has been photographed holding up a single red rose, as has been Gorbachev, the leader of France, 
and the Queen of England. There is a possibility of England's betrayal and by forces within in which event America would be compelled to stand alone. This possibility, aye probability, was clearly indicated in the poem ascribed to Merlin of King Arthur's court on the constellation of the Thirteen Stars. And we'll get into that right after this break. Ladies and gentlemen, you see this country has been betrayed by the Tories who never wanted to separate from England in the first place. The body of the Illuminati around the world are working toward one world government and if this Anglo-Aryan faction has its way they will rule the world through a council of elders. If the Vatican has its way the Pope will sit upon the throne of the world. Backing up one paragraph I quote again, there is a possibility of England's betrayal and by forces within in which event America would be compelled to stand alone this possibility, aye, probability, was clearly indicated in the poem ascribed to Merlin of King Arthur's court on the constellation of the Thirteen Stars. Here they attribute truth to legend. Supposedly, Merlin said, quote, When the cock shall woo the dove, mother and child shall cease to love. When the cock shall guard the eagle's nest, the stars shall rise in the west. Then seven and six shall make but one, the lion's might shall be undone. Here they attribute to a mythical figure, Merlin, a prophecy which they say is being fulfilled in the world. Quote, when the cock, or France, shall woo the dove, which they say is America, mother and child shall cease to love. In other words, rebellion of her colonies against England when the cock France shall guard, in other words France's aid to the eagle's nest which is the United States or America, the stars which they say are our constellation of thirteen shall rise in the west. Then seven and six shall make but one, e pluribus unum is their interpretation, and the lion's might shall be undone. This prophecy has been rapidly coming to pass since the Second World War. The English, the Anglo-Saxons, have permitted enemies within her borders, many of her, her own race, to gain control of her finances and institutions and replace what might be correctly termed Druidic Christianity, and that's exactly what it is. It is a perversion of true Christianity. In fact, when you hear what it really consists of, you will discover, ladies and gentlemen, that it is not Christianity at all but the remnant of the old pagan druidic and germanic and gaul pick religion mixed with a little mixture of christianity using this lie this legend of joseph to make them in to a master race these are the same people who just prior to world war ii attempted attempted to turn england into an ally with Hitler. You see, Druidic Christianity is a godless atheism, really. They say, unless the English wake up, the lion's might will certainly be undone, and the old saying, there always will be in England, will be proven unfounded. The stars upon our seal are set in the form of a six-pointed star, or the double triangle, symbolic of the perfectly balanced man. After the downfall of Egypt, this was called Solomon's Seal, and that is a lie. It was never called Solomon's Seal until it was adopted by the Jewish people as their symbol sometime in the 16th century, ladies and gentlemen. They say, but the ages before that it had its place in the temples of the greater mysteries, and that is true. That's exactly where it comes from indicating that the physical man and the spiritual man had attained equilibrium and that the son of man had indeed become the son of God. Now bear in mind that that is a not a reference to Jesus Christ. At each point of the star was placed the symbol of an order which symbolized arcane wisdom and because of the presence upon the altar within no man might enter into the holy of holies our innermost chamber with safety to himself save he who had attained to philosophic initiation 
and that is the true definition of Solomon's temple within the Masonic lodges and the lodges of all of these other liars and deceivers. For the temple of Solomon that they discuss has nothing to do with the Christian religion or the Jewish religion, but lies within each of them according to their own definitions. I continue. The special or spiritual symbol of America, aside from the pyramid and eagle, is the white rose, identical in its meaning to the white stone of legend and primitive masonry. For the meaning and the history of the white rose, study the War of the Roses, and you will find your eyes opened as to who is really behind this and what it really means. I continue, the constellation of 13 stars was in early drawing set in a wreath of white roses showing that the early designers were fully aware of future American individual spiritual development and that is a lie. Our forefathers were not a part of this. They are the ones who broke away from England, ladies and gentlemen. This is a perversion of their beliefs. They certainly were members of the secret societies and the Illuminati, and they were working toward the great work of one world government, but not under Anglo-Aryan rule. You see, our forefathers truly believed in their day of the brotherhood of man, meaning all man, at some point in the future standing upon an equal keel at birth and making for themselves what they will through individual responsibility. They really wanted this nation to succeed, but they knew in their hearts, because they understood human nature very well, that we would abdicate our responsibilities and our freedoms and would become slaves, and they would have to institute some kind of government to control the mob. Their aim was to topple the churches and states that existed in their world and bring about a true freedom of mankind, hoping that this would be it, but giving us all the tools to either make the experiment succeed or fail, for man should, they believed, and I believe also, get what he deserves. The design is now drawn in white clouds, showing that the spiritual nature of America is beclouded, or under a cloud for the moment. These clouds are shadows symbolizing the confusion of the present era, will gradually be replaced by bright sunshine, symbol of light, enlightenment, clear perception, and understanding. Solomon's temple was the design of the perfect man. Perfection is the ultimate of every man, unless he chooses ignoble defeat. The Bible, like the arcane teachings of the greater mysteries, tells us of the three-cornered copestone which was prepared to finish the pyramid and the temple, but was rejected and later became the headstone of the corner. Genesis tells us of one Joseph, the keeper of the stone of Israel, and I might remind you that Isis was also called the stone. It was because of the Magian or Holy Grail teachings that the Britons crossed Europe to Ansareth, land of betrothal. They quote Esdras 11-13. Folks, can you find a book of Esdras in the Bible? Of course not. They will quote anything that furthers their perversion and their lie. They say they crossed Europe to Ansareth, land of betrothal, in search of a land where they might keep God's worship pure and undefiled. Hence through Joseph, who was separated, cast out, or sold by his brethren, we inherited the white stone of all Israel, the copestone of the pyramid, and of Solomon's temple, that rock upon which the initiate Nazarene reminded Peter he should build God's church. <laughs> oh my, oh my. The rock or foundation of spiritual unfoldment within each individual and against which in the ultimate the gates of hell should not prevail. What this true church really is is made plain in, quote, My little children, of whom I travail in birth again until Christ be formed in you. Now they call Christ the Christos. Be formed means awakened in their language, and they reference Galatians chapter 4 verse 19. The one single word offers us the key to the entire mystery of the church and of man's ultimate goal. To travail is to suffer in giving birth. 
this birth is in or within us it is the quote unless ye are born of the spirit as ye have been of your mother's womb unquote you shall in no wise be able to enter the kingdom of heaven of biblical and mystical lore this being the law which governs the universe as it governs the drama of heaven which is the old cosmology worshipped at places like stonehenge it was in keeping that an Englishman, a master of heraldry, should give to the young republic during its struggle to separate from the mother country, as does the child from its mortal mother, the design for not only the work of the true Christic, our Christos Church, I refer you to the Christic Institute, which just is another branch of these perversions, but also the design for the great seal, which would express the whole future of the new country's work as a world leader and exponent of of the teachings of the new church and of the holy grail the all-seeing eye looking down upon the ancient pyramid symbolizes america the eaglet of eagle land and all she is to mean to the world if she does not permit herself to be betrayed by the degrading and destructive ideologies of decadent european and asiatic countries and utterly selfish traitorous leadership in our own country this emblem the eye is as ancient as man's appearance upon the earth being found upon the egyptian greek and chaldean monuments and i'm sure ladies and gentlemen they knew that it meant america back in those days mm-hmm yeah you just keep thinking that fools this is beyond understanding how intelligent people can fall for these scams and be so manipulated by someone who comes along flashes some kind of a certificate that he went to some kind of a school that taught him how to understand the Bible and he preaches this perversion and people fall right into line and believe it as fact simply because this person told them to if you follow them around long enough you will follow them to the doors of the lodge of one of these secret societies I can assure you This emblem, the eye, is as ancient as man's appearance upon the earth, being found upon the Egyptian, Greek, and Chaldean monuments, while the Arabians looked upon it and named it the highest and holiest name of God, and with hushed voices whispered, I am that I am. And that is what Elizabeth Clare Prophet preaches in Montana. The triangle about the eye stood from the most ancient days is the emblem of the Trinity. Now get this, folks, because this is what their Trinity really refers to. The triangle about the eye stood from the most ancient days as the emblem of the Trinity, Osiris, Isis, and Horus, progenitors of humanity, Father, Mother, and the Mother they call the Holy Ghost, and Son. It is the seal of the eternal law of the three of the universe, and the watchful guide to those who awaken and walk in the light. Quote, I will instruct thee and teach thee in the way which thou shalt go. I will guide thee with mine eye. Unquote. Psalms 32, verse 8. The legend, symbolized by the pyramid, is esoteric, given in numbers, measures, and weights. In these may be read the history of ages already completed and the prophecy of those yet to come. I refer you to ice the ultimate disaster 552000 five, that's the name of the book 552000 five, ice the ultimate disaster by richard noon i'll refer you in that book specifically to the interview with tom valentine where he parrots this exact same philosophy i also refer you to his book about uh, the pyramids i forget the name of it and his other book the late great I'm sorry, The Life and Death of Planet Earth. I was thinking of a book written by Hal Lindsey. But Valentine's book is The Life and Death of Planet Earth. You'll find this same philosophy espoused throughout. And you will find him on Radio Freemasonry, running you around in circles, chasing your tails, even now. Throughout the past ages, each with its leader runs the legend of the stone kingdom cut out without hands. Now remember, throughout all past ages, this legend, this story, this perversion has been repeated throughout the pagan religions since the beginning of time when man first looked up and equated the sun with the power of God. The inner kingdom of heaven. 
the last and greatest of all might have been the master Nazarene had he not been betrayed by his own people, as in England the land of Joseph and the Grail being betrayed today. Notice, when it comes to the Nazarene who was of Israel being betrayed, all of a sudden he's been betrayed by his own people, but his own people are no longer these people, you see. That's blamed on the Jews but yet they claim to be of the tribe of Israel. What hypocrites, what liars, what deceivers, what perverters, what manipulators. Unless Americans in rapidly increasing numbers become imbued with the spirit of America and awaken to the Christic Church, again I refer you to the Christic Institute, run by another secret society, the Jesuits, a similar fate may also befall America. Ancient architecture, heraldry, and the drama of heaven are all telling the people of America of their possible destiny, material and spiritual, no less than their responsibility. They're claiming that the Bible is recorded in the constellations of the heavens. The opposite is true, folks. The cosmology of the heavens in the ancient pagan religions existed long before the Bible was ever written. The Bible is a conglomeration of all of the metaphors and myths and religions of history passed down by word of mouth and written particularly the ones adhered to by the Hebrew race. As the head, body, and limbs of the great image, made of different metals, represented each messianic age, a new interpretation of truth, and an empire directly relating to some manifestation of that truth, so must America represent the white stone, and be a nation fashioning itself according to the divine pattern until it shall have attained to the messiahship. In other words, they're saying America is the messiah. Spiritual leadership. According to them, Christ is coming back to the earth, but not in a physical body, and he never was a divine human being, God incarnate in the flesh on this earth. Instead, it's an office that can be held by anyone, and in the new age, it shall be held by the new root race. In other words, they say that America represents the white stone, and it should be a nation fashioning itself according to the divine pattern until it shall have attained to the messiahship, spiritual leadership over all nations, overshadowing all that has preceded it. Quote, this cannot be accomplished until each citizen shall throw aside the veil of ignorance and superstition and see no longer as through a glass darkly, but face to face, when Judah shall no more be permitted to vex Israel, nor Israel envy Judah, but labor in harmony that the Lord's law be fulfilled. If this be not done, both may be destroyed, as have been many nations before them. Remember the symbol of royalty in England and of England itself is the lion. It was also the symbol of the tribe of Judah and it was the symbol of ancient Babylon, in particular Nimrod, the hunter. I continue, the time spoken of by Isaiah the prophet has come. It is a time when the learned intellectual cannot read the book because it is sealed as Greek to them nor the unlearned, because he is unlettered. Yet shall the book be unsealed, because the ancient arcane wisdom applies to the individual who is willing to work in obedience to the Christic law in his personal quest of the Holy Grail, in drinking of the cup of unselfishness, in his love for his neighbor and the stranger within his gates, in his loyalty to his family and his country, and his stubborn but holy insistence that destiny's prophecy shall not be set aside. So on the one hand, they talk about the brotherhood of man, about equal rights for all, about love for his neighbor and the stranger within his gates, the loyalty to his family and his country, and at the same time, these lying, deceiving manipulators are destroying the country. They're destroying the family. Oh yes, ladies and gentlemen, this comes out of the mysteries and nowhere else. 
and they believe that they are the master race and will ultimately destroy all other races and prevail as the rulers of the world. And yet they read this, they write this, and they see no contradictions, which makes most of them fools in my estimation. In any case, they are liars, deceivers, and manipulators, the scum of the earth. They are the destroyers. Each and every one may be the fortunate heir to this glorious inheritance, but must seek the white stone which crowns the pyramid within himself by the full development of his body, mind, spirit, and soul, the holy trinity of each son of man who has become the son of God. And there is the clue to what they intend. Man will become God. Man himself will become Christed, and that is what they mean by the return of Christ to this earth. Not a physical man of divine origin, God incarnate in the flesh, coming on the clouds, as the Bible describes, but man himself will become Christed. And as humankind becomes Christed, and the chaff is weeded out from the wheat, which is them and destroyed from the earth all other races they will prevail and Christ will be upon the earth in them it is in this manner that America will realize her destiny as the city set upon a hill a star that shall never set but become the light that shall light the world because the true church of the eternal Christos the Christ within man for whom there is travail in birth until Christ be formed in you man shall have become established and be the sanctuary for all her people this is what the Mormon church teaches it is just another branch of mystery Babylon perverted perverted by this hidden agenda of the master race the Anglo-Aryan master race incarnate in British Israelism world Zionism and if you're Jewish you had better reject it it's not about saving or preserving the state of Israel it's about creating a one world government and Orthodox Jews along with fundamentalist Christians or any Christian for that matter who will not renounce Christ as a divine incarnate of God in the flesh upon this earth any follower of the prophet Muhammad anyone who will not bow down to this new religion will be destroyed will be destroyed the state is the edifice the church must be the spirit this is the old Nazi coming back to us this is national socialism on a world scale. Where the state is the edifice, the church must be the spirit. The rise and fall of nations and people has been an exact ratio to their acceptance of the laws interpreted by their great spiritual leaders or their efforts to think, desire, and act in attempted defiance of them. This is the combination of British Israelism. It is what brought Hitler to power. It is the same occult philosophy that Hitler worshipped of the master Aryan race. We use the term attempted for the reason that though uncountable millions have made every effort to live outside of the law, none have thus far succeeded and all have passed into the limbo of things forgotten. This illustrates the trite well-known old saying, the mills of the gods grind slowly but they grind exceedingly fine. Nearly 2,000 years ago, the world as a whole had come to a sorry pass. Selfishness was rampant. God was all but forgotten. Men lived by greed and at the expense of one another. The few were the masters, spiritual and material of the many, and only a few were able to recognize the light of God. It was a time very much like our own today when selfishness and desire for conquest were the ruling passions. Some of you old enough may recognize the ravings of Father Coughlin, then, as always happens in exemplification of the eternal law, there came one who was to walk upon the shores of Galilee, a just and honorable man, for they attribute no divinity to Christ, one without selfish motive, one who did not seek to establish an earthly kingdom, but instead a heavenly kingdom on earth in which all who so desired and were willing to make the effort might enjoy the good things of earth. Do you hear that? 
He talked of God as none other had before him. He proclaimed God to be the Father of all creation, the supreme being of the universe, the maker of heaven and earth, and of man in his own image. This young man, this native of Galilee, the Nazarene, preached the fatherhood of God and the possibility, not the certainty, of the brotherhood of man and the immortalization of the soul of man. This master teacher manifested greater love, more wisdom, and courage than had ever before been found embodied in the body of any man. He possessed the desire to serve mankind as had none other before him. He taught the simplest, grandest, and most sublime doctrine or concept of life that ever fell from human lips. Yet despite the services he was ready and willing to render to his fellow men and the soul-inspiring doctrine he taught, the people of his day, except for a very few, misconstrued his teachings, ridiculed his concepts, and finally crucified him. The great Galilean was wise. His wisdom and understanding were beyond the comprehension of the men of his day, because then as now, simplicity had no power to excite or incite. Only the complex holes men enthralled, foreseeing the things that were to come, he prepared the way, so that, should his ministry and teachings be rejected, they would be preserved and passed on to a succeeding age. The age is now upon us, the new age, when man shall become the Son of God. Good night, and God bless you all, and may God have mercy upon your soul.